Hi, I'm David Gilbert, Technology Editor with the International Business Times UK. Google Glass is one of the most talked about products of 2013, and we're here today at the London headquarters of SOMO, a mobile solutions company who are one of the only people to get their hands on Google Glass in the UK. We're going to talk to Head of Innovations for the company, Manny Safa, about the product and what it means for developers. So how have you found it? What do you think of the uh, most talked about gadget of 2013, Manny? Well, as you can see, <laughs> sitting on my face, it's, um, it's a wonderful product, absolutely. I think uh, it's a definite shift, a complete paradigm shift into what we're used to when it comes to, to mobile devices. In terms of the usage of it, um, you do always feel slightly conscious of the fact that it's there, but actually after a while of wearing it, it just sits away in your peripheral vision and you do feel very comfortable with it on your face. When do you expect it to become available to the general public and do you think that the general public are ready for it? That's a very good question. Um, fundamentally, the product that's sitting on my face now is a prototype product. I mean, if I take it off and we look at the product, it's something that looks quite space age in, in, in its look and feel. And to be honest, I think that by the time I call V1, the real version is coming to the market, end of this year, um, it will be something that will look very different. There's a lot of companies I've spoken to that are ready to take the product and start building it into glasses itself. So to take it away and add that level of acceptance to it, the side stalk will sit inside of glasses, the front prism will actually project onto the glasses and the pair of glasses. So naturally the acceptance of that will mean uptake is far higher. So do you think that Google are kind of, they're just doing this to show what can be done and it's other companies that will take it on in the future and make it more acceptable? Absolutely. I, I think that Google are doing what they do best, which is showcasing the future of tech and they're bringing it to people today. I applaud them for that and I think it's a, it's a phenomenal thing that they've done. I also think that it's a case of if we map out the growth of tech, Moore's Law, power speed, double every single year, if we look at where the Google G1, the Android G1 device was four or five years ago, if that, and what that looked like, and we look at the Galaxy S4, Nexus devices, or the HTC One, compare those two products, that for me is the best indicator, if you want to plot a trajectory of growth or change in technology, of what this will look like in two years' time. And it's also a Google product, so naturally the, Sam the Samsungs want to get involved, the Asus's will want to get involved, Hopefully the Ray-Bans will want to get involved and utilize the brains in this into something that's actually more accepting than a, a Star Trek-like visor. How have you found that um, the companies that you represent and the companies you work for that want to create experience, new experiences and new apps, have they, are they willing to embrace Google Glass or are they still a bit wary of uh, what it is and what it can do? So since we've had Google Glass, we have sat down with the majority of our clients and talked them through it and talked talk through our ideas of where the, the, the technology is going to go. Every single one of them has been very receptive, some more than others. Um, there are a handful that have actually turned around and given us innovation budgets to actually see how they, we can apply this, uh, whether that be working with a finance-based business and bringing alive your bank accounts or speaking to your personal managers through your um, kind of glass piece here via video, or whether it be with an automotive client whereby you open up the engine of your car, you look around and an engineer will speak you through what the, what the possible issues could be. Um, and that's just the, the beginning, a drop in the ocean of the thinking we've been doing. Some of the thinking has been uh, far, far greater than that. I think the cost of the Explorer Edition was something around £1,000 sterling. Yes. What do you think the price is going to be for the consumer version and do you think it's going to be at a level where it's going to be a success? So we've done a lot of thinking into this and the main fact that underpins everything and the entire theory is that this is an accessory to a handset. It's not a handset replacement. Yes, if you're in Wi-Fi, you can do quite a bit with it, but actually it requires your phone, it requires a lot of, of um, help from your handset to, to give it its full strength. Given handsets now, the top-end ones sit at about £600 on average, looking at kind of the HTC Ones and the Nexuses and the Samsung Galaxy S4s, this should be around the $300 mark, I would say, approximately, and that's just my personal guess in, on, in that. And realistically, if it was anything higher than that, I don't think uptake would be there to the degree that it would need to become ubiquitous and used across the board.